Greetings, my late night listeners, and welcome back to Night Sessions. Our last adventure took place in Idaho near Loon Lake and covered the story of a possible Bigfoot encounter. Tonight, we're discussing an entirely different creature, and our exploration is taking us across the country to Point Pleasant, West Virginia a quiet little town that runs alongside the bank of the Ohio River and is said to be the home of the first ever publicized sighting of what is now called Mothman. It was during November of 1966 that two young couples, Roger and Linda Scarberry, as well as Steve and Mary Mallett, were driving to a remote area a few miles north of Point Pleasant. And it was there that the two young couples claimed to have seen what they described as a large flying man with 10-foot wings. Later, Linda Scarberry said, I wish I had never seen it. I wish someone else had. And on that note, my friends, I'll begin the story of our first encounter. The story begins upon their arrival at the abandoned power plant. They noticed two large red eyes reflecting the light of their vehicle headlights. It was Steve that noticed the strange sight first and pointed it out to the rest of the group. And that's when they realized the glowing red eyes belonged to a shadowy figure. They described what they say as a gray, man-like figure with large wings. The thing didn't run after being noticed, but sort of wobbled away like it couldn't keep its balance and moved out of sight around the corner of the power plant. Linda, Steve's wife, described the creature as having circular, fiery red eyes and a body like a man, but with wings. They said the creature was about six or seven feet tall with wings folded against its back, half man, half monster. You could see the muscles in its legs. The couples couldn't believe what they had seen. They quickly drove off, Linda yelling for Roger to hurry. The couples then saw the creature on a hill by a large billboard as they drove around a curve in the road. It spread its wings and went straight up into the sky. They were all terrified and kept yelling for the driver to go faster. The creature began gliding back and forth over the back end of their car. We didn't know what it was, and I don't think we've ever been so scared, said Linda. As they went along a straight stretch of road, speeding over 100 miles per hour, the creature was still able to follow them. They saw it in the back window and saw the shadow go across the car as it flew. They couldn't get away from it. They also heard wings hitting the top of the car as they drove. It's even said to have left scratch marks on Roger's 57 Chevy. It squeaked like a big mouse, said Mary Mallet. When they reached the edge of Point Pleasant, the creature disappeared, veering off into a field as they headed closer to town. The couples continued and pulled into a local dairy land to figure out what they should do next. Linda suggested they go to the police, but Steve and Roger thought they'd just be laughed at, and suggested going back to make sure the thing was still there but being too afraid, decided not to. So they turned back around, and as they were turning around, they saw a large, dead dog lying along the road. According to the couples, the winged creature jumped out as they passed where the dead dog was, went over the top of the car, and into the field on the other side. They drove back into town and parked at Tiny's Diner, and decided to contact the police. They told their story to Deputy Millard Halstead. Halstead didn't believe them at first, but knew they weren't troublemakers and saw that they were genuinely terrified. So he actually went out to investigate their story. The couples drove back out to the TNT area with the deputy, and he shined a spotlight around the area, including the tree lines. Deputy Halstead is said to have heard strange static disturbances coming from his radio that he couldn't explain. 
but he found no clear sign of the creature itself. The witnesses were sitting in their car and said that they saw shadows circling nearby and a cloud of dust kick up from an adjacent coal yard. The Mallet couple was too scared to go back to their home, so they stayed at the Scarberries. They kept the lights on and stayed awake the rest of the night. The following day, Sheriff George Johnson held a press conference to discuss the sightings. The local press began printing the story and named the creature Mothman, based on the comic book character Batman, who had just gotten a television series at the time. Steve Miller told the local newspaper, We understand people are laughing at us, but we wouldn't make all this up to make us look like fools. That same day, both couples went back to the TNT area during daylight hours and found odd-looking tracks resembling two horseshoes put together. Steve saw something flying up inside a boiler when a door was kicked open. No one stayed around long enough to see what it was. After this original sighting, more and more people began reporting similar sightings. Hundreds of cars full of curious citizens swarmed out to the TNT area in hopes of catching a glimpse of this elusive Mothman. A permanent imprint has been left on the valley of Point Pleasant, and the intrigue surrounding the mystery of Mothman remains to this day. And that concludes the first ever publicized sighting of Mothman in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Before we begin our next encounter, let's take a short break and enjoy this song. Try 
Welcome back. I hope you're ready to dive into our next Mothman encounter. After the story the young couple shared had been published on paper, it was later discovered that Newell Partridge, who lived 100 miles to the north of Point Pleasant, had a similar sighting only a short time earlier on that very same night. His story, along with the report of a group of grave diggers, was published in the newspaper a few days later. I'll read part of the article now, as it may connect a few dots for us, keeping in mind these events happened just a short time before the couples arrived at the power plant. Newspaper article titled, Eight People Say They Saw a Creature, Friday, November 18, 1966. Four other persons also told Mason County Sheriff George Johnson they saw it in the same general area. And a contractor, Newell Partridge, who lives 100 miles to the north, said he feels it may have had something to do with the disappearance of his $350 German Shepherd dog, Bandit. Partridge said he had sighted the thing in a meadow near his home in Doddridge County, about 90 minutes before the Point Pleasant sightings. Partridge said his television set began acting like a generator, and Bandit started carrying on something terrible. Partridge said he shined a flashlight into the field and saw something with eyes like red reflectors. The dog's hair stood straight up, he said, and the animal went into the field. The dog never returned, Partridge said, and there was no trace of it in the morning. Johnson said he was not discounting the stories he was told, but said he feels what was seen was nothing more than a large bird of the heron family. Sometimes called a shag, it's the smallest heron in the Western Hemisphere. Officials were at a loss, however, to explain how a shag could fly at 100 miles per hour, as Scarberry and Mallet said the creature did. If you noticed, Partridge said his German Shepherd dog never returned after running straight into the field after the creature. The young couples also mentioned seeing a large dog lying on the roadside near a field in Point Pleasant on their way back from the power plant. Is it possible that Partridge's German Shepherd could have traveled nearly 100 miles on foot in only an hour and 30 minutes? Maybe it was just a coincidence that they mentioned seeing a dog. Or maybe it's another clue to the mystery. I have one more story to share with you tonight that takes place much more recently. Our final encounter takes place in Chicago, Illinois, and was reported just a few months ago by a U.S. postal worker headed home from a late shift. The article I'll be reading from is provided by UFO Clearinghouse, titled, Witness Has Close Proximity Encounter with Winged Humanoid at Chicago O'Hare. I had just left work at the USPS sorting facility at O'Hare Airport at about 11 p.m. on Thursday, the 24th of September, and was walking out to my car when I saw something standing at the far end of the parking lot where I usually park. At first, I thought it was a very tall person with a long coat. As I got closer to my car, I unlocked my car, which caused the headlights to come on. The headlights hit the person standing about 20 to 25 feet from my car, causing it to turn and look right at me. I saw that this was not some person, but some red-eyed thing, and what appeared to be a coat was actually wings which it spread out as it turned to look at me. At first, I thought it was some kind of very, very large bird, but I'd never seen any bird that stood almost 7 feet tall. I'm five foot four, and this thing looked taller than me by at least two feet. This thing then started making some type of chirping sound, almost a half chirp and half click, like someone was clicking their tongue, but much, much faster. It then made some type of screeching sound and took off running toward me. It got to within 10 feet of me and took off into the air and flew above me. I was screaming hysterically as I crouched down behind my car's open door, and I dived into my car headfirst. 
I was in a near panic as I tried to start the car, close and lock the doors, and turn on my interior lights. I started my car and took off out of the parking lot and flew down the road till I hit the main road. I got home and told my husband, who also works at the same facility, and he was the one who told me about the sightings of this thing. I was scared blank and hope I never see this thing again. This thing is roaming around the area, scaring people half to death. I hope the airport people decide to do something about this thing someday. And that concludes our final encounter of the night. I should mention that there are some who say the so-called Mothman sightings are merely a case of mistaken identity and nothing so mysterious. They reason that a large bird of the heron family could possibly be mistaken as a large winged creature, attributing the reports of glowing red eyes to the red markings around the eyes of the sandhill crane, for instance. That seems to be the only reasonable explanation for these wild claims. However, I might add, speaking from my own experience, I see flocks of cranes almost every day during the colder months where I live. Sometimes I see them from a distance through trees or flying in the sky at great heights, and other times I've seen them very close up, passing right over my head or landing somewhere nearby. And yes, they are very impressive in size, and sound for that matter. But with their thin legs and spindly necks, I have yet to mistake one for a large flying man with 10-foot wings and glowing red eyes. But hey, anything's possible, right? And what I think isn't what's important here. What really matters is what you think they saw out there that night. Was it Mothman terrorizing innocent onlookers in the wrong place at the wrong time? Or is it a trick of the imagination? Do you think the postal worker saw a true winged monster in the parking lot? Or was it merely a migrating bird? I'd love to hear your theories, stories, or possible encounters you may have had. Please, leave them down below in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this episode of Night Sessions, give it a thumbs up, and if it's not too much trouble, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified of upcoming shows. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again very soon. Keep your eyes open, my friend. The world is a mysterious place. Until next time. I'm signing off.